Now, what do I mean by energy is emotion in action? Well, I'm a super nerd. I've been a nerd my whole life. I spent 15 years in corporate America. I did corporate espionage, which was market research, but it sounds cooler to say corporate espionage. And I'm a true believer in science and facts and, and how to figure out solutions to things and why things work and happen the way they do. And when you look at the word energy and what energy actually is, energy is actually measurable. You can measure energy coming off of your body. It's an electrical frequency, a vibration that you put out that determines how people interact with you, whether they're magnetized to you, whether they're repelled by you, whether they want to hang out with you, whether they want to hire you, whether they want to promote you and give you more money, whether they want to buy into you for projects and ideas, whether they want to trust you as a leader or as someone in their company that they can be mentored by or follow. So we want to be sure that when you think about energy, it's not just, oh, it's that up, that up feeling. It is that, but it's also noticing what's happening in here because energy takes what's in here, any emotion you feel, and translates it externally for the world around you to experience. That's why energy is emotion in action. And when I talk about energy being emotion in action, you can have stressed energy, you can have excited energy, you can have mad energy, you can have overjoyed energy, you can have concerned energy. Anything you feel inside can be a type of energy that people around you will interact with and feel and determine whether they want to hang out with you personally and professionally. So we want to be sure that we're turning on your different energies. Now, when I think about energy and when you think about all of the different emotions that you can feel in any given day, it can be hundreds of them in the course of a single day, right? So we want to be sure that we have a more refined and focused way to think about energy. That's why I have created the seven success energy centers to help you figure out what does energy mean for you? How is it going to help you move forward? How can you use it in your work? How can you use it in your life? And how can you use it today in this energy experience that we're going to have to help you believe in yourself, to help you belong, and to help you be bold in how you're moving forward with your work and your life? So what we're going to do first is I'm going to walk you through these seven energy centers really briefly so that you can get a baseline as to where you're at in these different energy centers. It's going to be a scale of one to five. One being, ooh, I'm kind of struggling in this energy center right now. Five being, I'm killing it in this energy center right now. And it's completely okay to have ones or twos. Our energy moves up and down. Our energy centers move up and down all day, every day. And there's no right or wrong answers. We're all going to have times where different energies are going to be <laughs> not that great and times where they're going to be amazing and off the charts. So it's okay if right at this moment some of these energies are a little bit lower. It's totally okay if some of them are really high. We want to just get a really good baseline. Here we're going to do this assessment. We're just a scale of one to five. You're going to just give yourself the rating of where you're at as I walk you through these seven energy centers because they are all tied together and they create flow in your work and life. And when you have flow, ooh, that feels good. Flow feels like progression. It feels like momentum. It feels like progress. It feels like you're getting stuff done. And it's like when you're doing something that you love, personally. Say you love gardening. I love gardening. I can garden in the from starting in the morning. Suddenly the whole day goes by and I feel like I've gotten so much done. I feel good. It went fast. I was flooded with feel-good chemicals. I wasn't stressed. I wasn't thinking about my to-do list. I wasn't thinking about the stuff that was causing me stress. I was just in it. I was in flow. And if you were to measure yourself before you start something that puts you into a flow state with electrodes and, and blood pressure, heart rate, respiration, perspiration, and then measure after, it's, it, it would be night and day. And that is well-researched. So you can go look at that. If, if you think, oh, this sounds kind of hippie, it is. But it's scientific as well and you can find any kind of science behind it if you just go do a quick google search reach out to me if you want some help on that or if you want some additional resources on the science behind some of the things that i'm going to share today but let's jump in let's start this assessment and give yourself a rating one need a little work five killing it at this one and remember no right or wrong answers it's okay if you have a low rating so the first energy center is vision energy. Now, vision energy is that ability to look ahead and see what your future, see what it is that you want. Think about your goals and say, here's what I want and here's why I want it because it's connected to my purpose and my deeper, my deeper mission. Now, 
vision was really shut down over the last couple of years as the pandemic was at work because we were in that high stress response. As I said earlier, even if life was good, air quotes, and you weren't in a place of massive change or anything like that, the world was changing around us so quickly that it actually put us into a fear state, into that fight or flight state because of unknown. And that prevented us from really looking ahead to say what we want in the future because we were just trying to get through the day. We didn't know how to plan for what was next because we didn't know what was available to us with all the change happening day to day. So as we're coming out of that into this new normal, your vision may have opened back up, your vision energy, or it may still be kind of stuck and you still might be kind of unsure what you want next. Neither is right or wrong, but give yourself a rating one to five. How is your vision energy with being able to see the future, visualize what you want, with your, connected with your purpose and what it is that you want for your future, both personally and professionally? Next, we have strategy energy. Strategy energy is saying, all right, I've got my vision, I know what I want, but now I gotta actually put the plan into place. So strategy energy is the planning, putting the puzzle pieces together, looking at everything that's happening in the world around you and saying, okay, this is what I need. I need these people, I need, the, these, I need to use these skills, I need these resources to create the plan and the strategy to make your vision real. And this can be something at work and it can be personal as well. So give yourself a rating, one to five. How well are, do you do at turning on your strategy energy, making those plans? Next, we come to communication energy. Now, communication energy is saying, all right, I've got my vision, I know what I want. I've got the plan created, but now I have to tell other people about it. I need to get people on board and communicate what it is that I want clearly, concisely, and also honor that other people may not be like me, they might not like me, or I might not like them. And ensuring that communication can still flow, that you can still move forward with your vision and strategy with the people around you, even if they're not exactly where you are. So you're flexible with the people around you while honoring what it is that you want to share and communicate at the same time. So give yourself a rating as to how well you do with communicating with people that aren't necessarily like you, and with people that are like you too, and ensuring that you're authentic to you, but you're flexible to the environment and people around you. Give yourself a rating one to five. Next we have relationship energy. And relationship energy is saying, all right, I've got my vision, I've got my plan, I'm sharing it out with the world, getting, getting, getting it shared out, but now I need to get the people involved to do it. You've communicated it out, but you haven't necessarily created the relationships to move everything forward. So when I talk about relationship energy, what I'm really talking about is reciprocal relationship energy. Because we all know energy vampires. Energy vampires are the people that suck the energy from a room, they have all the attention on them, they, they, they just, they aren't reciprocal in how they're sharing or engaging. It's just always focused on them. And we have all been energy vampires at one time or another, so it's, it's, it's okay that we sometimes slip there, but the goal is to ensure that we're usually in a state of creating re reciprocal relationships where we're giving and taking over time and that we're supportive and supported and that we're creating those connections with others that have meaningful growth and meaningful insight and meaningful unconditional love and support. That doesn't mean there's not still going to be critique sometimes. It doesn't mean you're not going to have rough patches. It doesn't mean that sometimes you're not going to need way more support than someone maybe that you're giving to someone. Like after my husband died, oh my gosh, I needed so much more support. But over time, I wasn't an energy vampire over time. It was just that short period of time. That's way different than if you're, you're always in that state. So give yourself a rating how well you do with relationship energy. Next, we come to confidence energy. So confidence energy is saying, all right, here's my vision, here's my plan, I'm telling people about it, I'm getting the right people on board and creating those recipro reciprocal relationships, but now I gotta tap into my own skills, my own abilities. I have to believe in who I am so that I can actually get this project, this vision, this, this strategy executed in a way that really aligns to who I am, to my superpowers. So give yourself a rating as to how well you do at owning your confidence, your superpowers, the things you're good at, and showcasing them, using them every single day. Give yourself a rating there. That brings us to creativity energy. Creativity energy is 
the ability to have fun, to look at things in fresh ways, to infuse your passions into your daily life, to just bring some lightness to the heaviness and hard work that it sometimes takes to create your vision and put your strategies into action. So thinking about your work in your life, how good are you at building creativity into it, fun into it, laughter, passion? And if you have, a, if you're really good at it personally, you're great at having fun, but professionally maybe it's pretty serious, maybe then you need to give yourself a rating of one or two so that you can really focus on bringing creativity into the workplace. Because when you have a team that's laughing, when you have employees that are happy, when you are having fun at work, it's going to boost productivity. It's going to decrease sick days. It's going to drive fulfillment at work. It's going to increase loyalty and decrease turnover. So you want to ensure that your workplace is really boosting creativity energy in your employees and your team and your colleagues and in yourself. So give yourself that rating. How well do you do with creativity energy? Next, that brings us to motivation energy. So motivation, it's a tricky word because we know that motivation is you know, in your head, you could have the best of intentions, but your body can sometimes betray you. You can just get blocked by things that you're like, why? I want to do this. I want this thing to happen. And, and, and you just, for some reason, can't make it happen. It's like when you want to go to the gym. Say you want to lose 20 pounds. You're going to go to the gym every day. The hardest part is not being on that treadmill. The hardest part is getting dressed, getting in the car, and driving to the gym. We all know that. We've all experienced that in some way, shape, or form with some sort of goal in our lives. It's not the actual doing, it's the starting of the doing. <laughs> and when you have a big vision or a goal, when you have a plan, when you've got the communication going, when you've got the relationships being built, when you're using your superpowers, when you're having fun while you do it, that can all be just sabotaged if you don't have that inner motivation to kick yourself in the butt, <laughs> to unclench and make things happen. So give yourself a rating as to how well you do with that, that internal motivation, getting things done, being able to say, I'm doing this, and actually then doing it. Not just saying it, but doing it. Give yourself a rating one to five. All right, so you've got a little, little benchmark there now with some numbers by all these seven energy centers. Everyone was going to be different. And what we want to do now is ensure that we have a way to turn those energies on at any given time. So what we're going to do now is you're going to learn some energy hacks. Now an energy hack is a way for you to, in an instant, turn on that specific type of energy in your work, in your life, right now. Not something you just read and you're like, oh, that's nice, but you could actually measure yourself again with electrode, electrodes, blood pressure, respiration, perspiration, heart rate, and you would notice and be able to measure an actual difference in your body systems before and after you do this energy hack. Now, there are hundreds of energy hacks, thousands of energy hacks that I teach. We're only going to do seven today, seven for these seven energy centers. So that regardless of which ones you do really well on, which ones maybe right now you've got a one or a two on, that you've got some tools that you can do right here during this little session, even though it's pre-recorded and we don't get to interact, you can actually still do these right here while you watch this, and that you can use later. And I'll be giving you some tips too that you can use with your team, with your colleagues and your employees as well, okay?